Hello, you're watching Avenue X, and today let's talk about the recently started airing Chinese contemporary drama Long Cheng Take Us Home. This is a 36-episode drama that is airing on the web platform iQiyi. It is produced by iQiyi, directed by Lin Yan, written by Di An, who is also the original author of the novels that this drama is based on. The original novel is a three books series, each named after one of the main characters in the story called Xi Jue Dong Ni Nan Yin. The drama is led by Ma Yili, Bai. It was shot from the end of November 2021 to April 2022, mainly again in my hometown city Chongqing. But the city in the original work is Taiyuan, not that close to Chongqing. Two very different cities. This particular thing about picking your location, shooting a drama, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the later part of this video. This is a 36 episode drama. As I'm making this video, it has aired into its 20s number episode. Personally, I've watched the first 15 episodes, and I decided to. Quit the drama. Based on what I've watched by the episode count 15, I'll give it a 1.5 gold mine to be specific. As for the rest of the drama, I probably will never find out. As usual, let me quickly introduce you to what the story is about. This is a domestic drama focused on three cousins related on the father's side, so they all have the same surname. Zheng Dongni, Zheng Xijue, Zheng Nanyin, played by Ma Yili, is the eldest one among them, the big sister of the Zheng family. She is, in the novel's description, drop dead gorgeous, very different from the traditionally highly regarded good girl. In Chinese society, and she grows up in a family where it's shadowed by domestic violence. She goes out and live on herself very early on. She went abroad to Singapore and I think in the novel America, but in the drama Germany by herself. She's a very adventurous, very strong, independent woman. But she also has very troubled marriage and relationship. Then played by Bai Yu is the sandwich in the middle, younger. Guy cousin whose parents passed away when he was rather young, so he got adopted by the uncle and aunt. And because of his special upbringing, he always is very careful and takes a lot of responsibility on himself. In a way, he always is in the position of having to feel grateful, and therefore everything he does is for the better of the whole family. And in that process, completely sacrifice his personal needs. Then you have the youngest girl. Zheng Nanying, who is the biological daughter of the adopted father of Bai Yu's role, the spoiled youngest girl in her generation in this family, doted by everybody. She's constantly being watched and being advised by all the elders in the family, but she wants to be her own woman. So you have these three cousins as the perspective characters of the original novel. In the drama, they are put in one story. So basically, this is a Big family's messy domestic history story. Now let's get into the good and bad part. On the positive end, point number one: this is overall a very acceptable, good quality contemporary drama, like many iQiyi contemporary dramas you've seen in recent two three years. Here I'm just talking about the hardware part of the story, camera, cinematography, editing, how fluent. The visual language is, and how matured a contemporary drama production it appears to be. Nothing special now these days because iQiyi has constantly put out quite a lot of very consistent standard contemporary dramas. The second thing is the acting of the leading actors plus the main supporting actor actresses. They're all. Quite qualified and quite good. I wouldn't say any of them is outstandingly good or surprisingly good if you've watched their previous dramas. But there's no significant problems I can see. Obviously, this is a contemporary drama, and one of the requirement for being proper is that they all use their own voice, which I think is the case in this drama. So that is also a positive thing. I would even point out, for example, that I think Bai Yu's acting in this drama is. Slightly improved from his acting in Chao Jia's Daughter, another big domestic messy drama that he's been in 
recently. I think this one is even better, more relaxed, more realistic, and definitely better than the thank you doctor drama that we've seen recently. That drama's problems, although mostly comes from script level and the character design level. As for Ma Yili, she's actually much older. <laughs> Experience was in the industry, a different generation actor than Bai Yu. I think she did a good enough job but in terms of whether she's the perfect cast, I have a little bit question about that. I don't think necessarily she's the best choice, but at least she wouldn't give you too much trouble watching. It wouldn't bring you completely out of the story. So I still say acting actors, that part of the story is on the positive end. The third positive thing about this drama, only applicable to people who like this type of drama. If you're looking for a domestic conflict heavy, rather messy, sometimes highly melodramatic kind of story, but you know, there are people who really dig that. I, there's nothing wrong, not a judgment in any way. If you like that kind of quite shocking sometimes plot of who is getting along with who and they have what kind of relationship and who gets cheated and then why it all happened and what is the previous history of people that you don't realize they have and all that mess. That's something you dig and you want to watch a drama that's filled with it. Oh, this drama will give you a lot of that. And it will give you this type of plot in a rather relaxed, slow, quite nicely crafted and not over the top hyped up style. Although I don't know how they're gonna end with the adapted screen version. If they do, most of the plot in the original three novels is just gonna get worse. As the story moves forward, you'll see more extreme situations happen. Now let's talk about why I gave up at that point. I really cannot bring myself to click open episode 16, although it updates on the day, 15, 16 together. I basically stopped midway on that day and decided this is enough for me. I have better things to do. The first thing compared to the previous video I've made this week talking about 13 years of dust that's also shot in Chongqing that integrates the landscape into the story itself. This drama, I really don't think they should have picked Chongqing as the place where the story is setting because the original story is set in Taiwan. The heavy industry in that story is heavily related to characters' fate. The way people live there, the landscape, everything is very important. When they move it to Chongqing, things just don't look quite right. Chongqing used to be a heavy industry city too, but only in very specific areas and really pollution heavy industries have completely moved out of the main area of the city these days. So Chongqing is the no longer that heavy industry city now compared to Taiwan, which is a totally different picture. Landscape wise, vegetation wise, topography wise, doesn't quite integrate with the original story and the atmosphere of it. And then the later plot will have even more to do with pollution, all that to do with the characters. It just wouldn't sit correct these days now into a Chongqing setting story. And also in this drama, you'll see people riding bikes, which also did happen in 13 years of dust. But in this story, when they're riding bikes, which actually happens in real Taiwan much more normally than in Chongqing, older city, which I believe is what the story is, you know, intended to be setting in. There's no way you can ride a bike in old Chongqing. It's all uphills, downhills. You die by the law of physics. <laughs> so it's really odd because I can tell it's Chongqing. I know where it's shot and it's so classic Chongqing topography and you see two people riding a bike. I'm like, what are you trying to do? Using that as your vehicle of travel? I know to international audiences, this probably doesn't matter that much, but to a Chinese person, just the way the city appears, even the vegetation is too off. Then the second thing about this drama, which is I think for most of the audience is applicable. If you're not a part of liking melodramatic plot people, then you probably belong to this side of <laughs> audiences, which is you'd rather look at something that makes you feel good. I mean, this is definitely not a feel good drama because it is very 治愈, not 治愈. They sound the same in Chinese, very funny, but one word means causing depression, the other word means healing you, okay, making you feel better. So this is not the feel better zhiyu, this is definitely causing depression zhiyu. And because it's particular style that is not very pokey and sharp and always just aimed at crank it up, it's the slow burn, slowly cook you, put you in pot and slowly boiling it to death type of depression causing 
trauma. For me, right now, I don't need it in my life. I don't know if there are that many people who would want to watch this type of plot these days. Whether it's in China or globally, you know, economy is shit. Inflation is crazy. People are losing their jobs. AI is coming in and wars are still looming over everywhere. And it's all a mess. Most of the people in this world are not really having the best time. Dramas, if it is a place for you to escape to, you probably want it to be fantastic. You want it to be unusual, detached from your life, giving you a little bit life energy, excitement, let you vent some negative energy out or get you super entertained and forget about the rather depressing reality we're living in. <laughs> this drama just adds more on the depression. The third point related to the second point. Here is a tiny spoiler if you mind, don't watch this part. Our male lead character played by Bai Yu is made to be the sacrificial lamb of the whole Zheng family with that many people, the uncles, the aunts, all the cousins. He's not the oldest, but somehow he shoulders most responsibility. He gave up everything he could have done in his life kind of to just stay in the city and keep the family together. He picks the career of a teacher of physics in a middle school because it's stable. He can take care of his uncles and aunts and this big uncle, second uncle, whoever uncle, the mess in their family. He can go and put the fire out. He can stay there so the family doesn't break apart. A lot of that is due to the fact that he feels he owes the uncles and the family that much. Everybody takes advantage of that. They don't even apologize or they apologize, but then they keep doing the things that will hurt him. And then when things didn't go the way they want, they even blame him for not being like, don't know, doing a better job. The girlfriend that he's with for many years was actually the scandal girlfriend of his youngest uncle many years ago that he didn't know. And when they meet again, these two, they decided to come back together. And so imagine the male lead's awkward position in the family. Your ex-girlfriend now becomes your aunt. <laughs> I mean, like, ah, uh, what? And he convinced himself that that's better for everyone. And even when the other members of the family are very offended by the whole thing, he goes in and explain and trying to persuade the uncles and aunts to accept the youngest uncle of his family marrying his ex-girlfriend. Like that kind of plot is only the beginning, the biggest thing in the beginning of the story. Later, there will be more epic things like that. Make you feel, wow, is he like playing the family Jesus? And it's just too much for 2020s, whether it's a woman or a man, right? Whether it's a male role or a female role, it's not worth it. You know, kick all their family members away. You don't need to do this for them. You don't owe them that much. It's ridiculous. And I feel so sorry for this character. And I feel so annoyed by all the things that the family members does to him and how the story just like keeps adding all the pressure on this person that I'm like, goodbye, I can't deal with it. It's too much. So for the people who didn't mind spoilers, you've heard it, okay? You can go and decide whether you want to venture into this type of ocean of trouble for the main character. I wouldn't say the time I've spent watching the drama is completely wasted, but then I'm not gonna invest more. I'm just gonna stop it here and then move on to other new things that are coming by the time this video goes out. That should conclude my video, my first impression and kind of end <laughs> of all my impression on the drama Longcheng, Take Us Home. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.